wise proverb cautions the hunter, let the wind be your guide where deer's fate resides. That is to say, if you are fighting against the wind on a hunt, you've already lost. A deer that can smell you is a deer that you will never see. On this blustery hunt, I have teamed up with friends and local Tasmanian hunters, Tom from Electronic Off-Road Bikes and Tom from Hunting Tasmania as we face the wind and the rain in the hope of harvesting black fellow deer. The bikes are mounted on the trucks, the mornings are cold, the wind is issuing its challenge. Will we be able to turn the wind in our favour? How close can we get to the deer? Let's find out. I hunt animals in the pursuit of life. Life lived and life taken. I believe it's through this dance with nature and the wild places that we truly live, connect and grow. I'm Chris Waters, the Australian Huntsman, and these are my stories. Of all the senses that give deer an advantage in the dance between predator and prey, a wise man would bet that it's their powerful sense of smell that set the odds of survival in their favour. Deer have an excellent sense of smell, which they rely heavily upon for detecting predators, finding food and identifying other deer. Studies have even suggested that deer can detect scents from distances ranging from over 100 metres to over 2 kilometres depending on the factors such as wind conditions, terrain and the strength of the odour. Now when you're planning your hunt, it's important that you take into consideration the direction that you think the wind will be blowing in. But planning can only take you so far. When you arrive at your location and the wind is doing something different, the prudent hunter will always change their plans. Harley, on your right, there's a small group of does. Just be on that stump. Now Colm's friend Harley, who was also tagging along on the hunt, hadn't had the opportunity to hunt deer in over 12 months due to the birth of his first child. Congratulations, Harley. So we'd organized in advance that he would take the first shot opportunity. This kind of pre-planning is essential when you're hunting in a large group. The last thing you want to do is lose an opportunity to take a shot because either everyone is too polite or the opposite, no one can agree on who will go first. Harley, there's a wombat sitting right below where you're shooting. <laughs> oh, there he goes. That's crazy. Through the shoulder. No exit, mate. Perfect, mate. Yeah, really nice. Must have been lung if she's bleeding out of mouth, I guess. She Probably. was in trouble early. Oh, she'd only be three year old. Now, I love hunting with Colm. He's a cheerful chap, he's optimistic, he's fun to be around. He sells a fantastic hunting e bike product, but sometimes I can't understand a word that comes out of his mouth. She got one for your twice, didn't she? Yeah, she was in trouble early. You might take a bit of bone there to a table. You can come out. Yeah, it does have a foot on there, doesn't it? Deer up here seem to wear their front teeth out a lot more than different areas. Or Tassie, for some reason. Yeah, so they've still got the dots on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally weird. Now it was time to skin the deer, and I can tell you, I've seen deer scun or skinned a hundred different ways by a hundred different hunters who will all tell you that their method is the best. But I tell you what, Tom's method that utilizes a kneading and massaging force-based approach to separate the skin from the meat is one of the fastest and most efficient I've seen. If you're ever in Tasmania and you want to be shown how to skin a fellow deer in less than five minutes with zero flesh left on the hide, seek out Tom from Hunting Tasmania. He can teach you a thing or two. So over the last couple of weeks, I've had a bunch of people ask me about this bit of gear that's on the bottom of my rifle. And I figure while the boys are having a conversation about what we do next, I have a few minutes to spare in this hunt. I'll put this down. I'll take a few seconds to tell you all about it. So essentially what it is, it's a monopod shooting stick with a bipod base. It's manufactured by a brilliant Australian hunting company called SmartRest, and it's a tool that's designed to increase your accuracy and the stability of your shot while you're shooting out there in the bush. 
What I love about it is that it supports five different shooting positions. So you can shoot laying prone on the ground, or from a seated position, from a kneeling position, from a standing position with the bipod braced up against your hip, or shoot from a standing position with the stick touching all the way to the ground. Once you've finished taking your shot off, you need to reposition quickly. It's a quick action to snap the hyperpod to back underneath the rifle, sling over the shoulder, and then off you go. Or alternatively, you can detach the hyperpod to from the unit itself and use it as a walking stick. Or if you want another combination again, you can detach the bipod and mount that to the Picatinny rail to shoot prone. Now you're not always in a position in the bush to find the ideal object to rest up against to improve the accuracy of your rifle. And sometimes you don't want to reposition because that will startle the animal. Well, this bit of kit solves that problem. It allows you to shoot anywhere, anytime, in any condition. And the best news is that Australian Hunters Club members get a discount when you purchase it from the Eagle Eye Hunting Gear website so that's another great reason to join the club anyway I think the guys have finished chatting we better get off and continue the hunt let's go with one deer down and the golden hunting hours of the post dawn period spent we decided to move into the denser wooded areas knowing that the deer will be doing the same thing now in conditions like this when the wind is pounding you'll often find the fallow deer will prefer to bed down in feeder gullies which offer them protection from the wind and other elements the dense vegetation not only conceals the deer but also acts as an insulation helping the deer conserve their body heat during the cold weather Unfortunately, these gullies are tight and make sneaking up on a deer that much harder, especially when the wind is still swirly. Now, after a few failed attempts, we decided to head back to the trucks and break for lunch. On the way to the trucks, though, we did see this beautiful metal-coloured fellow buck. He got a pass, though. This trip was about meat, not trophies. Maybe next time. I'm an ethical farmer, you see. I get around my property on an electric bike. Don deers. <laughs> They tear up your paddocks, the cows get took all over them when you rev the engine and what an electric bike, you talk to Eeyore, call him, an Irish fella. Alright, exactly. see you later. <laughs> Alright, so here's a quick tip for the savvy outdoorsman. If you ever find yourself out in the bush on a windy day like this, in need of a fire to cook on, the stump of a tree that's been cut down is the perfect fire pit to build your fire in. It not only shields your fire from the wind, but it also acts as the fuel to burn the fire. How good's that? Now here's a situation where a strong wind can actually work in your favour as a hunter. While we were cooking our food, I noticed there was a wombat not too far from us. The wind was blowing hard towards us in our face, and the wombat was busy feeding. Now, without the wind to send our scent towards him, I was able to get close to him, like really close. This is a trick that you can use to your advantage when you're hunting if the conditions are right. <laughs> and while we're on the topic of wombats, let me clear something up. It's not uncommon for new Australian hunters to mistake wombat scat for deer scat. Here's the difference. Wombat scat is large and cubic in shape. This ensures that the poo doesn't roll down hills. Now this is important because wombats are highly territorial and they use their poo to mark their territories. Now deer scat on the other hand is smaller in size but larger in quantity and resembles a pill-like shape. So hopefully that helps. With our bellies full, we packed up the bikes and our cooking equipment, ensured that the stump fire was well and truly out, which is really important to do in order to prevent ground fires, and headed out in the bush to continue hunting. Oh, busted. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was fun. So with that adrenaline filled moment out of the way, before we go any further, I want to stop and invite you to join like me as a member of the Australian Hunters Club. We are one of Australia's fastest growing hunting clubs with members in every state and territory. Through our club, you can go on the draw to win professional hunts and hunting gear every month, find and connect with other local members through our brand new members directory, attend events, join other members on their planned hunts, even get discounts on leading hunting brands and online Australian hunting stores. You can, like me, join as a member or learn more by heading over to australianhunters.com.au. Then you can come back and watch the rest of the video. With the sun setting and our hunting window closed, we decided to call it a day and head back to camp to rest up. Given both Harley and Comet both had shots on deer that day, the next morning Tom and I decided to head out by ourselves and rather than narrate what happened, I think I'll let the footage speak for itself this time. This is why I love hunting. Personally, it doesn't matter if I have a large buck or a doe in my sights, I still get nervous every time I get ready to take a shot and a thrill every time I pull the trigger. If all you're looking for while hunting is the biggest trophy you can find, you are robbing yourself of the bounty nature has to offer, as well as the important responsibility every predator has to maintain the balance of the ecosystem. We continued hunting the rest of the day through the wind and the rain and in the last few minutes of daylight, thanks to Tom's keen eyesight, Harley once again managed to make up for his 12 month hunting lull by shooting a beautiful black fallow spiker. Now it's worth noting that shooting spikers is typically prohibited in Tasmania, but hunting in this particular location is one of the rare exceptions to this rule. The reason behind this restriction is to ensure that spikers have every opportunity to grow into healthy bucks for future buck hunting seasons. And considering hunters in Tasmania are only allowed to shoot one buck per year, this gives hunters the best chance of getting the best buck. Look at his ears. Been in the wars. Yeah, he's been battling already. He's been fighting. Split ears. He's fought again, really. <laughs> no, he fought his last battle. He's still here. Hunting in the wind is no easy feat. The gusts, relentless and unpredictable, create obstacles at every turn. But the determined hunter perseveres, finding a way to overcome these challenges. It's funny, in some ways the wind is the perfect embodiment of the hurdles we face as hunters. Its presence whispers doubts and tests our chances of success, yet deep within us, we feel a primal connection to hunting, an age-old tradition that binds us to the natural world. This bond fuels our determination to press forward, undeterred by the cutting gusts. Confronting the wind assault, we acknowledge the delicate balance between hunter and hunted. It demands our respect and an understanding of our place within the intricate web of life. 
hunting goes beyond trophies. It embodies a profound appreciation for the cycle of existence and the responsible use of our environment. In this battle against the wind, patience becomes your ally. You adapt your strategies, attuning your senses to decipher its shifts. Every gust becomes a clue, guiding your steps and aiding you in understanding the intentions of your prey. With heightened awareness, you navigate the dance between predator and prey, knowing that your choices can determine the success or failure. Beyond the thrill and sharpening of skills, hunting humbles us. Taking an animal's life comes with great responsibility. We recognize the weight of this act, appreciating the sacrifice made for our sustenance. Gratitude fills us, hearkening back to a time when our survival depended on these endeavors and each kill was treated with the utmost reverence. I'm convinced in a world where our connection to nature weakens, hunting provides a pathway back to our primal roots. It teaches us patience, respect, and responsible stewardship. It allows us to witness the raw beauty of the wilderness, reminding us of our duty to preserve it. Whether pursuing a majestic buck or a graceful doe, each trigger pull reminds us of the intrinsic value of hunting and the delicate balance of life it represents. This time, despite the wind's challenges, we pushed forward undeterred and our perseverance paid off as we filled our freezers with the rewards of our hunt. It signifies not just our ability to overcome adversity, but also our unwavering spirit as hunters. My hope too is that when you face the wind's resistance, you find a way to embrace your primal instincts, connect with nature, and find a way to provide sustenance both for yourself and your family. Finally, if you haven't already checked out the Australian Hunters Club, I encourage you to go do that right now, australianhunters.com.au. And if you haven't already checked out the rest of the episodes in the Australian Huntsman Season 1, I'll drop a link below where you can check those out and joining the adventures. Otherwise, happy hunting.